Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane again. My lesson for today is all about finding the circumference and the arc length of a circle. The examples that I'm going to use were lifted from the Mathematics 10, Quarter 2 module, pages 20 to 25. Let me first give you a problem that is related to our topic for today. So which pepperoni pizza will have more calories? Calories are units of measuring the amount of energy that you are going to get from a particular food. So is it this full pizza that is 6 inches in diameter or the half slice pizza but 8 inches in diameter? So at this point, your answer might be based on a guess. Now to find out the accurate answer for this question, we are going to learn two topics for today. It is finding the circumference and finding the arc length of a circle. One of the ways to find out which has more calories is by comparing the circumference of the whole pizza to a half slice pizza. So let us now learn how to find the circumference of a circle. Remember that the distance around the rectangle or a square is called the perimeter. Same thing is true that the distance around the circle is called the perimeter of the circle or most commonly known as the circumference of the circle. So the formula that we use is C equals 2 times pi times R. R represents the length of the radius of the circle. Okay, another formula is C equals pi multiplied by the diameter D. Since Twice the radius is equal to 1 diameter, that's why this formula is the same as 2 pi r. Okay, c equals pi times d. We are now going to use this formula so that we can accurately solve for the circumference of the whole p. So our given is, it is 6 inch round pizza. 6 inch represents the diameter. So, use the formula C equals pi times D. The constant that we use for pi is 3.14. Instantly, you just press this in your calculator and you are going to get the answer. So, by substitution, C equals 3.14 times 6. The answer is 18.84 inches. So, that is now the circumference of the round pizza. We are now going to compare the circumference of the round to the half slice pizza, but this time we are not going to use the formula circumference. But instead, since it's only half slice, we will use now the formula for arc length. We will now first compare what is an arc measure versus an arc length. In my previous video, I was able to teach arc measure. Okay, arc measure is the degree measure that an arc makes from the central angle, while the arc length is the length of the intercepted arc when flattened and it is measured in units of length. So, example here, the arc measure is the angle that an arc makes at the center and the arc length is the measure of the intercepted arc here when flattened. So, to give you more precise example, an arc length is the distance between two points along a section of a curve of the circle. So, if I'm going to put point A here at the end point of the intercepted arc and point B on the other end point, we have now arc AB. And if we are going to flatten arc AB, it will form into a segment. And let's put there point AB. So that becomes segment AB. And that is the arc that we are going to measure. So arc lengths are measured in units of lengths like inches, meters, centimeter, and so on. So the formula for arc length is given by theta divided by 360, which means that's the central angle, okay? Because that's the part that you are taking from the whole multiplied to 2 pi r. 2 pi r is the formula in finding the whole circumference. So this is the formula when you are dealing with just parts of the whole. 
Okay, we will now use this formula in solving for the arc length of the half-life pizza. So, given is 8 inches half-slice pizza. So, that's our diameter there, 8. But in this example, I'm going to use uh, the formula 2 pi r. So, I have your arc length is equal to theta over 360 multiplied to 2 pi r. So, by substitution, since it's a half slice and it's a semicircle, therefore, the central angle here is 180 degrees because it, it forms into a straight angle. Okay? Multiplied by 2, multiplied by the value of pi, multiplied to 4. Now, where did I get 4? Since the diameter is 8 inches, okay, let's write it here. Therefore, half of that is the radius. So, our radius is 4. Okay. Actually, we can verify it here. Since 2 multiplied to 4 okay, gives you a value of 8. So, it's the same as the formula pi times t. So, by simply, uh, we are going to simplify 180 over 360, which is one half. That's actually the part that you are taking. And 25.12 okay, is the circumference of the whole pizza. But you need only half of that. So, multiplying it by one half, we get 12.56 inches. So, that is actually the arc length okay, of the half slice pizza. Now, we can now accurately answer the question in the problem. Okay? So, which pizza will have more calories? Is it the whole pizza or the half slice pizza? Okay. Remember the half slice pizza? It has an arc length of 12.56 inches and the whole pizza has a circumference of 18.84 inches. So, therefore, we can confidently say that the whole pizza has more calories. Remember, calories are not bad, especially if you want to, if you need energy for whole day activities, okay? But if you are on a diet, we always watch the calories that we intake. Okay, moving on, let us have this example so that we can verify which formula are we going to use. Find the length of the crust given a central angle here of 60 degrees here and a radius is 8 inches and you're being asked about the length of this crust. Are we going to use circumference formula or the arc length formula? Okay, obviously, since this is just a part, we are going to use the arc length formula. Okay, theta over 360 times 2 times pi times r substitution. 60 over 360 times 2 times 3.14 times 8. Then multiplying all together, 60 over 360 is just 1 sixth. Okay, 1 sixth of the whole pizza. And the circumference of the whole pizza is 50.24. Okay, then we just need 1 sixth of that and the answer is 8.37. Rounding up. The length of the crust is 8.37 inches. So, that's how easy to apply this formula. Okay, let's move on now to our next problem. Okay. This time, one Gabriel's performance task in PE requires him to jog at least 100 meters per day. He decided to jog around the fountain area of their subdivision. He started jogging from point A to B. Then B to A. So, which means from A went to B, then went back to A. Okay. Did he meet the requirement in PE? Remember, the requirement is 100 meters. So, you cannot go below 100 meters. You can go over 100 meters. Now, given the central angle okay, at the fountain is 135 degrees and the radius is 40 meters. So, we are going to solve now for what? Is it the circumference or just the arc length? Okay, the arc length. So, let's use this formula, theta over 360 multiplied to 2 pi r, substitute 135 over 360 times 2 times 3.14 times 40 meters, which is the radius. Okay, then we simplify 
that 135 over 360 is just 3 eighths, okay? 3 eighths of the whole circumference. And the whole circumference is 251.20 meters. So multiplying that to 3 eighths, we get an arc length of 94.125 meters. But remember that arc length is only from point A to point B. But remember one Gabriel jog from point A to point B, then B to point A. So which means we have to double that length. So multiplying it by 2, we have 188.25 meters. So did one Gabriel meet the requirement in PE? Yes, one Gabriel met the requirement in PE because he jogged more than 100 meters. Okay, I hope okay the lesson about circumference and arc length are clear. Okay, and I was able to explain it well, and I was able to differentiate when to use the formula for circumference and when to use the formula for arc length. Okay, in summary, you are going to use the formula 2 pi r for circumference if we are dealing with the whole circle and use the arc length formula when dealing with just part of, part of the circumference. Now, in my next slide, you are going to see the key to correction to your learning task number 2. Okay, the red uh, colored fonts okay, are the answers or the theorems okay, that provides the reason for the statements in the first column. This is a two-column group. You, ca you can be guided by these answers by browsing your module. Okay, and these are actually filled in the blanks in your module. Okay, With this and my Last slide, I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos and I hope you can also share my videos to other grade 10 students and other students who are, who are in need of understanding these lessons that I am imparting on you. So, goodbye and I'll see you in my next video.